Hey everybody, it's Michael from Wahoo Comics here with another hunt and haul video. As usual, I've got a bunch of books that I'm looking forward to showing off to you. Uh, first of all, I got a group of books from a new seller that I found who was unloading parts of their X-Men collection. And if you've been watching any of my videos, you know that I'm really big on picking up X-Men keys right now. We know the X-Men are coming to the MCU. And so all these issues are already rising in value and they're set to spike even more once we finally see these characters. And so the book I'm most excited about picking up from this seller is this one, Uncanny X-Men 266. And so this is considered by CGC to be the first full appearance of Gambit. Now, if you saw my last video, you know there's some controversy about this character because he actually showed up earlier in X-Men Annual 14, which came out a couple weeks before this one. Uh, but CGC considers that a cameo appearance. And, and there's a few characters, and I mentioned this in the last video, uh, where among the comic community there's uh, disagreements over what's the real first appearance. Is it this one where they showed up for a couple of panels, or this one where they're actually a full part of the story? And this is one of those characters. And this one is even uh, a, a bigger controversy because his earliest appearance isn't just a, a panel or two, but it's, I think it's like 15 panels he's in. But nevertheless, this one is the one that's still considered his first full appearance. And it's the one that's the most collectible. Uh, it's the one that has the most value. And I don't think that's going to change, even as some people are calling that into question, uh, just because this one has been iconic for so long. And especially because the cover is so much better. Gambit obviously is, a, is prominently on the cover. And so I think this is the one to get. Really, both are, are good investments. And the annual might be the best investment now, uh, because it can be had for much cheaper than this one usually. Uh, but I think this is still, the, if you can only own one, this is the one to own. I'm glad that I now have both. Uh, and this issue has a lot of personal significance for me uh, because this is one like Amazing Spider-Man 365 that I talked about a few videos ago where when I was collecting as a kid, I passed up on. And I distinctly remember I had a friend uh, in school who also collected comics and he had picked up this issue and I was over at his house and he was showing it to me and he mentioned, hey, it's the first appearance of this character named Gambit. And at that point, I had just gotten back into collecting or really starting collecting for the first time. And I looked at it and you know, the colors here are a little outrageous, uh, you know, the hot pink and all that kind of stuff. And, and so I didn't know much about the X-Men and I was just like, ah, meh, yeah, okay, great. I'm glad you got it for you, but it's not really for me. Uh, and then it was within a few years from that, the character took off in popularity. He was, of course, part of the 90s X-Men cartoon that I grew up on. And, uh, and, and yeah, it became worth like 50 or 60 bucks pretty quickly. And so for years, I have regretted not picking up this issue when it came out. And so now I'm finally excited to own my own copy and not to have to live with that regret anymore. And I got a really good deal on it. Uh, and you know, a lot of these issues, again, they're rising in value. And so I was starting to wonder, am I ever gonna pick one of these up? Probably not, because I think I'm gonna be priced out of it. Uh, but I found a great deal and uh, really happy. And it might've been my last chance to pick one up. Well, I got a few other X-Men keys from this seller. Uh, first of all, X-Men 169. Uh, and this is the first appearance of Callisto and the Morlocks. And so this issue contains multiple first appearances, which as I've talked about before, always makes a book a good investment. Because if, if even one of these characters shows up in the MCU at one point, then this book is set to, to spike in value. So pick this up if you can get it, it's still, still pretty affordable. Uh, X-Men 184, uh, I, I showed this off, I'd gotten a copy a, a few months ago. Uh, this is the first appearance of Forge, and another uh, second copy of a book I got was Uncanny X-Men 221. And so this is the first appearance of Mr. Sinister, uh, who I mentioned last uh, last video, is one of my favorite villains in, in comics. And so I, yeah, I'm, I'm happy to pick up these other two books. They're in better condition than the other ones that I have. And so at some point, I'm gonna flip the other ones on eBay. And I'm really trying to decide with these X-Men books, when is the time to, to sell? You know, are these books truly going to keep climbing in value until they come out in the MCU? Or is the, the huge increase in prices just driven by speculation now? And at some point there's going to be a correction. Uh, or, you know, these 
characters are still years away. Do I want to wait years until it hits the top, even if it, it's ceiling infinite, even if it keeps rising? So I'm curious what you would do. Uh, if you, leave, leave a message in the comments. If you had an X-Men key that you knew at some point you were going to sell, do you think now is the time to sell, or should you hold and then uh, a few years later uh, look to, to, to unload it? So anyway, I'm really excited to have this uh, better grade copy. Uh, also, in, in addition to Uncanny X-Men, I picked up a, a few uh, books from the run Astonishing X-Men. Uh, so this is issue number three, which contains the first cameo appearance of Abigail Baran. And that's a character that plays a big role in the secret invasion storyline, uh, which if you've been following Disney News, there's going to be a secret invasion show on Disney Plus at some point. Uh, and a lot of people think Abigail Brand is going to be a part of it. Amelia Clark actually has been cast in an undisclosed role. And so a lot of people think uh, she is going to be that character. I think that's probably likely. I don't know, but if I you know, would put in my money on it, and obviously I am in, in some ways because I'm picking this book up, uh, that's who I think she'll be. Uh, but even if it's not her, I still think Bran at some point will show up. And so then I also got uh, issue number six, which is her first full appearance and also contains the first mention of S.W.O.R.D., uh, which was also in WandaVision. It's an organization that, you know, kind of like a FBI type thing, but it, especially in the, in the comics deals with extraterrestrials. It's a little different in, in the MCU. Uh, but uh, this book has really increased in value a lot over the past a you know, couple months since WandaVision especially. Uh, and so I'm really excited uh, to pick it up. I got it at, at you know, pretty much a cover price, which is a real, a real bargain now if you're paying any attention. A couple other small uh, keys I got. Uh, Astonishing X-Men number nine. This is the first appearance of Danger, which the X-Men Danger Room is their uh, like training facilities. It took on its own sentience and they made like this robot. Uh, and, and so any, anytime you can get a first appearance of an X-Men character at cover price, which I did here. I mean, it's a worthwhile spec in, in my opinion. I mean, X-Men are so popular, you'll always be able to probably unload this uh, for what you got for it at, min at minimum. So the floor is really low, but the ceiling is super high if any of these characters are ever uh, introduced. And then similarly, uh, Astonishing X-Men number 10, this contains the first appearance of Sidra and Ancient Deems of Sword. And so there's some speculation that they might also be in that secret invasion show. And again, the floor is super low on all these X-Men books, really on any X-Men book, uh, and the ceiling is, is really high. Well, in addition to those uh, X-Men keys I got from this new seller, of course, I also picked up some books from the seller I've been buying from uh, for the past few months. And some of those new books were, were also X-Men keys. So here's another really nice one. X-Men 120. This is another one like Gambit where there's some controversy. This is the first appearance or at least first cameo appearance of Alpha Flight. And so there's some disagreement in the community. Or should it, is this issue 120 or 121 the one that you should own? Um, really, they both have a lot of value and I wish I owned both. I'm super excited to now have this one. And I actually just found out this week that there's a lot of demand for this book also because the cover is black. And if you know anything about uh, comic covers, black covers are hard to find in, in high grade. And so having this in high grade, which this is, this is pretty nice grade. I am going to send it to CGC and I'm curious what it's going to come back as. Um, uh, but, but it's in really nice shape. Uh, and, and so, uh, you know, I'm really happy to have it. Someday maybe I'll get 121, maybe not. But first appearance of Alpha Flight. Uh, they're like the Canadian X-Men, uh, so to say. It's where Wolverine got his start. Uh, and uh, a, a great team to, to be specking on. Speaking of Wolverine, also got X-Men uh, 212, and this was uh, the seller. Had all these tags uh, from when I think his, his dad bought them, you know, some of these comics. So this is what his dad had, had paid for it, their stepdad. And uh, this features the first fight between Wolverine and Sabretooth. This is up here, Wolverine versus Sabretooth round one. Uh, which is pretty amazing. You know, they in the comics have become huge arch rivals. Uh, I think they'll be uh, sometime in the, the MCU uh, fighting. And so I'm really glad to have it. Just a cool issue. Um, and then also Wolverine number two. This is the second from his limited series. 
uh, a couple of months or a month ago or so, I showed you I got uh, two issues of number one that had been graded, and now I'm excited to have issue number two. This is the first appearance of a character named Yu-Gi-Oh. Well, in addition to those X-Men keys, uh, something I've picked up from uh, the seller is a bunch of Thor keys. And so I'm going to show you now some of those. First of all, this is the one that is the nicest of those keys. This is Thor 337. And so this is the first appearance of Beta Ray Bill, who's an alien Corbinite who was worthy to wield Mjolnir, uh, you know, Thor's hammer. And so he transforms into kind of like this Thor character and there's the storyline that I still want to read. I don't know it fully, but they kind of battle over, over Thor, uh, over, over the hammer. Who does the hammer really belong to? Um, but this issue has been skyrocketing in price. I'm really glad to get it when I did. He's super popular. I like him. I don't think I like him as much as a lot of people do, but I'm really happy to have it. And he is neat. I, I've really just started to read some of his stuff. So got 337. Uh, and then also here's 338. And so, of course, this is the second appearance of Beta Ray Bill. So I've talked about before, if you get priced out of the first appearance, which I'm thankful I did, I'm getting close to being priced out of it. Yeah, the second appearance is a great one to pick up on. Uh, this is also a cool cover uh, because it's an homage to Thor 126, uh, which is the first actual issue of Thor, even though it's 126. So Marvel had a, a bunch of uh, titles uh, for years and years and years. Uh, that had different superheroes, and then at some point, I don't even know the history behind this, I've got to look it up, I guess just for branding's sake, they retitled the issues, they kept the numbering, but retitled them, uh, and so Journey into Mystery uh, was a title, a series ran for 125 issues, Thor was introduced in that issue in, in issue number 83, and so it kind of becomes a Thor-centric issue for all that time, and then at 126, they decide to just retitle uh, Journey into Mystery into Thor. And there's a couple other series that did something similar. And so that 126 had this a similar cover to this, except for it was Thor uh, versus Hercules, uh, and which I think is a, a, a great book to pick up right now. Uh, if, if, you know, it's obviously a lot more pricey than this one, um, but uh, Hercules probably is going to come to the MCU soon. Uh, Russell Crowe was actually recently cast as Zeus, uh, and he's going to be in Thor for us. So it seems like uh, Hercules is coming soon, and I wouldn't be surprised to see him in Thor 4. Also, uh, Thor 339. Uh, this is the first appearance of Stormbreaker, which is this uh, hammer that Beta Ray Bill gets once Thor uh, gets Mjolnir back. And uh, it's already been in the MCU, uh, but it's a big part of the Beta Ray Bill story. Also got uh, Thor 364. 365 and 366, which are the first stories and first appearances of Frog Thor. Uh, and, and I have to read this. I, don't, I, I haven't read this, and so I don't know the full story, but there's basically like this uh, human that's turned into a frog somehow, I think maybe by Loki's magic or something like that. Uh, and then a shard of Mjolnir comes down, and he picks it up, and... And, and, and he's, just, he's worthy, and so he transforms into uh, yeah, this frog Thor, and, uh, and, and, and Puddle, Gulp, Puddle Gulp is his, uh, I guess, his frog name, and uh, then he becomes Thor, Frog of Thunder. Uh, but it's, it's really interesting, and the character was recently picked back up in the current Donny Cates run. Uh, if you read uh, Thor now, the Donny, Cates, Donny Cates is maybe my favorite writer right now. And that's not a hot take. A lot of people feel that way. His stuff's just awesome. So he's writing on Thor. And so he recently re reintroduced his character, and it's really helped boost his popularity. And so all of those issues are, are, uh, are, have really risen in value because of that. Also, Thor uh, 371. And so this is the first appearance of Justice Peace. Uh, the Time Variant Authority, and the first kind of mention of the Time Variant Authority. And so these are characters that are, are going to, maybe not just as Peace, but at least the Time Variant Authority is going to be in the Loki show. It's set to debut, I think, like in the next week. Very, is some here, sometime here in June, but it's right around the corner. Uh, and so this has already gone up uh, a lot in value. Um, and if Justice Peace in particular, he hasn't been announced to be part of the show, but if he's a part of the show, then I expect this book to, to really... Uh, grow in, in price. 
Uh, the final Thor issue I'll show off is Thor Annual number five. And so this is the first appearance of Tooth Nasher and Tooth Grinder. Uh, and they are these goats uh, that Thor, Thor uses. And there have been leaks from Thor 4 uh, that they are going to be in, in that movie. And so this is actually my third copy of this that I've picked up over the past few months. This is the, 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 the best grade that I've picked up, and so I'm going to hold on to this one. Um, but I will look to flip those other two uh, probably right around uh, the time the movie comes when I think I'll be at its peak. All right. I've been picking up X-Men keys, Thor keys, uh, and I've picked up also some Hulk keys uh, from this seller. And I don't have time to show them all off to you today, but there's one I want to go ahead and show to you because I am so excited to have it. And this is Incredible Hulk 102. Uh, so I talked about how Journey to Mystery uh, was retitled Thor. Well, the same thing happened to a series called Tales to Astonish. So Tales to Astonish uh, had a lot of characters in it over time. You know, it, it had Ant-Man was introduced in there, Wasp, you know, obviously they're popular characters. Uh, and then they begin to have some issues that centered around the Hulk. And the Hulk had already been introduced. He had a very short-lived series, just six issues where he was introduced. And then he just, Marvel kind of did nothing with him. Uh, and then they started putting him in these Tales to Astonish series. But then it was retitled into the Incredible Hulk, starting with issue 102. So even though it's 102, it's still the big premiere issue. So this is the first of the Hulk uh, series. And man, it is a beautiful cover. I think it looks cool. I'm really excited to start picking up some really key Silver Age books. I've only got a couple now. I, didn't, I mean, I didn't have any before this year. Uh, and this is one of my favorites. And I will definitely be sending it off to CGC. I'm so excited to have it. Uh, and there's a lot of other books I'm excited to, to, to have too uh, that I'm in the process of picking up. But this is certainly one of my favorites. And it, yeah, it's just, it's just awesome. Just personally, it's just awesome. All right, I'm gonna wrap up showing off the books with a, a couple of sleepers, my sleepers of the week. Uh, first of all, um, we have Raiders of the Lost Ark, number one. Uh, and so this is actually the first appearance of Indiana Jones in comics. And I think this is something you can probably find in, in dollar bins. It's not really going for much at all. Uh, but in actually, the, the seller you can see here, uh, he was kind enough because I've ordered so many from him. Uh, he gave it to me for free. And it's a funny story because of this. He, he sent me a picture. He's going to open up the boxes that his, his stepdad had of comics you know, that he's, he's selling off now. And it was a box of at least dozens of these. And I think it might have been hundreds of them of this issue. And so he had, he had quite a few. And he was kind enough to send me this one uh, for free. And so I'm super happy to have it. But I, I, I let him know I'm actually planning to, to, to try to buy a, a couple more uh, from him. Uh, because I think this is another one, you know, the, the buy-in is so low uh, that, 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 that is uh, a really good issue to speculate on right now. Uh, you know, the Indiana Jones character, of course, has been popular and there hasn't been much to do with him uh, lately. Uh, but when Disney bought the Star Wars properties, uh, this, is, this is also a George Lucas property. And so they were able to acquire the Indiana Jones property as well. And so they are in the process of making a movie of him. Uh, and I don't know how far down the road they are, but at some point he'll be introduced. And so it's awesome to have this uh, first appearance of his. And then the other one, other sleeper I'll show you, speaking of movies, uh, I picked up Dune, number one. And so this is uh, based on the, the 80s Dune movie, uh, which I've never seen, but it's kind of notorious to, to be really bad and not very good uh, but this is the first appearance of a lot of the characters and as you might know there's another Dune movie a remake coming out this year and so I think well this book's already been climbing in value and I think when the the movie comes out uh, I it could it could climb quite a bit in value and so if you can pick it up for really cheap which which I was able to get a great deal on it uh, it's another one that you know nobody I didn't even know this thing actually existed <laughs> until uh, the seller uh, listed it among the the comics he was uh, he was moving, 
And uh, but then when I saw it, I was like, oh man, I've got to have that. That's really cool. And so I'm, I'm excited about it. Uh, so there's all the books I have to show to you. A couple of other quick things I'll share with you. Just some things I was uh, encouraged by uh, from from selling. Uh, first of all, I showed off. I recently picked up the Thor 338, the second appearance of Beta Ray Bill. Well, I actually picked up a lower grade copy of that a few months ago. Uh, and so once I got this better copy, I went to flip it on eBay and so I was able to sell it. And I sent the, the, the buyer a private message to say, hey, thank you for buying it. Uh, it you know, here's the transaction number. Uh, and Which, first of all, I've got a question about that. Uh, and I'd be curious to hear what you say. Le leave a message in the comment. If you buy something on eBay, do you want the seller to send you a, a message to say thank you? Uh, so I've, I've looked this up online, what should I do? And I've seen people do both ways. That, that, that they'll send a message, hey, thanks for buying this, or some just say, no, you, you want as little communication with the buyer as possible, you don't want to bug them. Uh, if they reach out to you, of course, talk to them, uh, but otherwise just send them whatever it is they bought. And so I'm really curious, what do you prefer? You know, so it'll help me know how to reach out to people when I sell them. So some of the people I've reached out to that have bought something, some of them I haven't, and I've just shipped it to them. Uh, but this this happened to be, the guy who bought the Thor 338 happened to be one of the guys uh, that I, I personally reached out to and said, hey, thanks for buying this. And he sent me a message and he said, well, thank you. He said, he told me he was a, a collector of Beta Ray Bill and that this was the only Beta Ray Bill issue that he didn't have. And so he was super excited to, to, to be able to own it. And that just made me feel really good. Uh, of course, I've really been, felt really good about a lot of things that I've, I've bought and have experienced the joy that comes from, from buying cool things. But this was the first time where I had someone thank me for selling them something. And it helped me realize, oh wow, you know, I can be a part of, of bringing others joy uh, through selling. And obviously, of course, I benefit uh, by getting money that I can then you know, invest into other comic books um, and they'll bring me joy. But it was just really cool to, to be on that end and, and to be able to help someone uh, get something that, that they wanted. And so I'm looking forward to selling even more than I was uh, because I understand it's a way that I'm, I'm helping others out while, of course, again, being helped myself. And the other thing with selling uh, recently, uh, I finally got my first reviews on eBay and they were all positive, you know, especially they were positive about how well I packed. Uh, I've, I've been so nervous uh, sending the issues off, not knowing if they're packed well, because of course, uh, if the issues get damaged in the mail, then you know, the, the buyer is going to be upset and want to refund or might leave a negative review, which will keep others from buying from me or something like that. But thankfully, the reviews have been good. Uh, and so I'm super excited now I can ship out with confidence and knowing that, okay, I know what I'm doing. I know how to keep these issues secure, whether I'll reach the, the, the buyer safely. Not only for my own sake, but of course, if they, if they buy something, I want to, to, to get them uh, what they what they bought in good condition. All right, well that's it. Thought I'd share that with you. Uh, those are just some encouraging stories for me, and I hope you enjoyed hearing them. Uh, thanks for watching the video. Of course, as always, if you haven't subscribed to this channel, I'd really appreciate if you would. It would really help uh, me personally, and then help grow you know, the, the the investment and community that I'm trying to build. Uh, like the comment, comment, uh, like the video, comment. Uh, tell me what are some cool issues that you've picked up lately or, or answer some of those other questions I mentioned earlier. Uh, what, are, uh, what would you do with X-Men keys right now? Sh sell or hold? Uh, and then uh, and do you like uh, sellers to, to, to reach out to you on, on eBay uh, to thank you for your purchase? Anyway, thanks again, guys. I really appreciate all of you who watch it. I'm excited about the channel uh, growing and always have a fun time doing these videos and hope you enjoy it as much as I did. All right, until next time.